Mark chapter 5, the first 20 verses, expresses this incredible encounter between the maniac and the Messiah. It starts off like this. They went across the lake, Jesus and his disciples, to the region of the Gerasenes, and a man with an evil spirit came up as soon as Jesus got out of the boat. So he's on the other side. He has entered the dark side. He is outside of the territory of Israel. And basically, technically, to, to a Jew, that is unclean territory. It is not pure anymore. And that word unclean runs like a thread through these 20 verses. And the man is described as unclean. So he's an unclean man living in an unclean territory. And it describes it, oh, it's awful. He lived in the tombs. So it's a picture of uh, death. He's been excluded from his own society. He... He's been chained, but they couldn't chain him anymore. He'd often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. Maybe it's a kind of first century way of dealing with uh, lunatics or with extreme mental illness. I think they still did it in England until the 1950s. So no one was strong enough to subdue him. So day and night he would wander among the tombs screaming out. Can you imagine if you lived in the village next door? Who's that, Mum? And it's the man from the tombs, this maniac. And he comes against Jesus straight away, it says. Youthless, immediately. And Jesus confronts him. Basically, it's like confronting your own worst nightmare. It's like a, a giant football hooligan with a machete. <laughs> and you're wearing the wrong team colours. And you're face to face. You're out of your comfort zone. It's almost the worst person that you'd ever want to to meet and he's cutting himself it's one of the few biblical references to like self-harm self-abuse in that way and it's he is uh, terrifying and strange screaming and Jesus well in one passage it, it says Jesus described himself come to destroy the works of the devil and in, in John 10, it says, the devil comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And here in this man, you see somebody who has been emotionally killed, whose life has been stolen from him, who has been destroyed. And he sees Jesus from afar, verse 6, and he runs and worships him. That's a bit of a conundrum, isn't it? What do you mean, worships him? Well, the, the, the literal uh, Greek word can mean just bowed down. It can mean he threw himself at his feet. Or it could mean that there was some tearing between this voice inside him. You know, like people say when they shoot up a, a playground, and they say, the devil made me do it or something. But there's a voice inside him and his own voice as well. So maybe he, he, there's a kind of... A civil war going on between his own little grasp on sanity that's making him scream and the voice of the demon making him destroy. And so he bows down before Jesus. He, he submits to this uh, evident authority, this, this quiet dignity, stepping out of the boat, looking at him. Eyes of, of love and strength, determined, holding in his hands the, the kingdom of God. And he said, do not torment me. Because Jesus had been saying, get out of him, get out of him. So you see something new here. You see this kind of almost like a, a, a face off between the, the authority of light and the authority of darkness. Do not torment me. And it's, um, people have said this is a glimpse of God's ultimate plan to, to, to destroy uh, demons. And of course, if you believe in God, and if you believe in a, a loving, living God, then that means the ultimate rejection of everything else. And this man, this poor, sad guy, seemed to, to, to represent in his body that something else, that other life, that non-life, life among the tombs. So Jesus said, what is your name? And he said, my name is Legion. I wonder who he's talking to. Was he talking to the demon? Some people have said he was, you know, but he might have been talking to the man. He might have been reaching into the guy's spirit and saying, 
Who, who are you really? Who are you? Who are you? But anyway, the demon answered. He said, my name is Legion. That means it was multiple. It means it was organised. It means it was military. It was because, of course, the word legion, it's just a, it's just a transliteration of the Latin word. So, so anybody who hears that thinks of the Roman soldiers who are organised, military and opposing. Opposing. Who have the whole country in their grip. So him, he's describing himself as that. The total alien threat. It's interesting, isn't it? So Jesus says, come out of him. And the demon or the man said, don't send us out of the country. Don't send us out of the region. And so there's, now you've got the next interesting little moment. The pigs on the hillside. Of course, uh, Jews, did, farmers didn't, didn't herd pigs because they were an unclean animal. They were grossly unclean. And so he, the unclean goes into the unclean, okay? And it becomes Swine Lake. Oh, it's terrible. Well, somebody said deviled ham, which to my mind is even worse. So it's, uh, it's interesting. In, in Jewish uh, theology, Jewish thinking, the, the pig was a picture of the worst kind of uncleanness. So you've got two kinds of uncleanness. You know, you know this is a Jewish story, ultimately. So you're saying you've got a, a physical uncleanness and a mental uncleanness. And so Jesus sends them. And what's going on with these pigs? It's like a, it's like a picture of the ultimate intent and purposes of Satan. I have come to steal and to kill and to destroy. And even the pigs going into the lake is a picture of destruction. It's of where we're going unless we meet Jesus. It's of... Oh, it's a scary thing, isn't it? Really, this whole story is deeply troubling. But what a contrast. Somebody who's naked and bleeding, furtive, dwelling in tombs, crying out, screaming in the night. And then the ultimate picture of transformation. When they came to see him, they saw the man who'd been possessed by a legion of demons, dressed and in his right mind. It's a picture of the transformation that comes when Jesus comes into your life, confronts the very worst part of you and speaks to it. Let's leave it there for today. God bless you.